I also want to thank uh, my community partner, Asheville Greenworks, for helping to guide and uh, develop this research throughout the year. All right, and so with the help of Asheville Greenworks, we came up with three primary project goals. So the first one is to expand on a heat study that was completed by the NASA DEVELOP program in 2019. So this study took land surface temperatures and US Census data to create a heat risk map of the Asheville city area. And my job was to expand on this to encompass all of Buncombe County. The second goal we had was to use ArcGIS Pro to map the hottest and most vulnerable areas within Buncombe County. And the third, third goal is to take this map and use it to target priority neighborhoods for Asheville Greenworks' tree planting campaign. So now I wanna talk about why it's important to map heat. So as you can see from this figure, um, temperatures can change depending on the, the time of day as well as different land cover types throughout a city. So if you look down here in the rural areas, you can see that temperatures tend to be a bit lower in areas where development is a bit more dispersed and there's more vegetation. And so as you get closer to the suburbs of the city, the temperature will rise. And again, once you're in the industrial and warehouse areas, as well as in downtown. Um, and this little control, the control slides is covering my, um, my reference for this. I took this figure from the USGS website. All right. And so this increase in temperature as you get more development is called the urban heat island effect, which many of you maybe already know. Um, a reason for this effect is that um, concentrations of concrete and pavement often absorb and retain heat for a long period of time. And this is slowly released throughout the day, which increases those temperatures. And this urban heat island effect is an issue and is considered a public health issue by many different researchers. Um, according to some of the studies that I found online, um, a primary, or according to studies that I have found, hospital admissions tend to increase during the height of summer as well as during heat waves and other episodes of extreme heat. We see that these admissions typically are in adults above the age of 65, as well as those who face chronic illnesses, um, especially those that are exacerbated by heat, such as heart diseases and lung diseases. Thankfully, there are some ways that we can mitigate this. Um, and one of these ways is through preserving and adding to our urban tree cover, um, which is what I'm gonna be primarily talking about today. And so now I wanna talk a little bit about how vegetation can have an impact on heat. So earlier this year in July, I took, um, I was able to borrow some portable heat sensors from the atmospheric department at UNCA. I took um, the, my McCullough, my I'm so sorry, <laughs> my McCullough Fellowship cohort with me to a couple different locations throughout Asheville. And one of these locations was Carrier Park. I chose this location because it has multiple different land cover types within a relatively short period of time. And so the first spot that we stopped at was the baseball field here. Um, this is an area of, oh, sorry. Um, this is an area of predominantly grass and surrounded by trees with one road going along the side. In this area, we found temperatures are about 87 degrees. Then in, in about a one to two minute walk, you can make it to the Velodrome, which is an old race car track that has been converted into some bike lanes as well as some pedestrian walkways. Um, this area, as you can see, is pretty heavily paved. And even within that short walk, temperatures increased by four degrees, making the Velodrome 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And I thought this was a pretty good demonstration of how temperatures can change based on land cover, even within this, an area as small as a park which leads me into the heat vulnerability index that I created. Um, so to create my heat vulnerability index, there were three primary criteria I needed to look at. The first is exposure. So this looks at where people are exposed to the highest temperatures throughout the county. The second one is sensitivity. So these are gonna show who's the most sensitive to these high temperatures, such as those um, adults above the age of 65 and those with chronic illnesses. And then our third criteria is adaptive capacity. So this is gonna show what means people have to adapt to these temperatures. Um, for this criteria, we chose to look at vegetation primarily. Um, we did that because Buncombe County is in 
um, a temperate rainforest area where we do get a lot of rainfall and vegetation is, uh, yeah, vegetation is everywhere here. And we have lots of different tree species, et cetera. And so the first criteria I wanna go more in depth on is exposure. So for exposure, I created a land surface temperature map using satellite imagery from the Landsat 8 satellite. And so to do this, I looked through about four different years worth of data to find a day that met the, met the needs that I needed for this. And so it needed to be a day where the satellite passed completely over Buncombe County, where it was a relatively hot day, preferably in the hottest months of the summer, as well as on a day where it wasn't raining, which that was the hardest part. As I, as I said before, we are in a temperate rainforest. And so out of four years of data, there was only one day that met all of that, all of those needs, and that was June 22nd of last year. So once I had this day, I used bands four and five, which are the infrared bands, and bands 10, the thermal band, to create my land surface temperature map using this equation down here. Um, so this equation was provided by the NASA DEVELOP program, where BT stands for brightness temperature, and then the lambda and the alpha are both constants that were provided by the program. And so I clipped this map to the Buncombe County boundary and scaled it one to zero. So if you look over here, you can see um, the red sig signifies the highest temperatures. Um, the highest temperatures were roughly in the Asheville city center and the highest temperature was 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that temperature is actually directly located over the Asheville mall, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then the lowest temperatures are located up here, kind of towards Pisgah National Forest. The lowest temperatures that I found in Buncombe County were 68 degrees. And these are predominantly in areas where people um, don't reside. All right, so the next one I'm gonna go over is sensitivity. For sensitivity, I used a variety of data sources. Um, I look, I, um, including the US Census Bureau, the CDC, and the Health Resources and Services Administration. All this data was taken from 2010 and 2020, and it was all on a census tract scale. So if you look over here to the right, you can see all the data that I included into this map. Um, the first is adults above the age of 65, as well as those living alone. I actually combined these two together and scaled them separately to make sure that age wasn't double counted here. Um, next, we have our six chronic illnesses. So we have heart disease, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, asthma, high blood pressure, diabetes, and depression. So I chose these areas because we see increased morbidity rates in these, um, in these illnesses when they're admitted to the hospital during high temperature, during like the summer and high temperatures. So last, I have my situational data. So these are gonna be your MUAs or medically underserved areas. So these areas are where people have a limited access to primary health care. And I also have the Gini coefficient, which looks at income inequality within an area, and it takes into account um, both their income and their savings, which is why we chose this. All right, so once I had all of this together, I scaled it one to zero. So a census tract that checked off mo more boxes would be a one, and a census tract that didn't check off any would be a zero. And then I converted this into a raster format to be the same as my land surface temperatures. All right, and so very briefly, this is the sensitivity map that I created. Um, I just wanna point your attention to census track nine, which is this area here below the Asheville downtown area. I also wanna point out census track 29, which includes Barnardsville. Um, I'll be talking about these quite a bit later on, so just make sure to keep those in the back of your mind for now. All right, so the last one I want to point out is adaptive capacity. So for adaptive capacity, I decided to make an NDVI. I chose this because it's going to show all of the vegetation that's actively photosynthesizing on the same day that I took my temperatures. So to create this, I used the same satellite imagery and I used bands four and five, the infrared bands to create this. I clipped it to the Buncombe County boundary and then I scaled it so that the forest would be a zero and the developed areas would be a one. All right, 
So once I had all my all three criteria together, I added them together using the raster calculator tool in ArcGIS using this equation down here at the bottom. So since each layer had a scale of one to zero um, added together, that makes the heat vulnerability index have a scale of three to zero. Okay. So I'm gonna make this map bigger in just a second. I just wanted to point out, point out some important context prior to going into it. So the highest score in Buncombe County was a 2.5. Um, that's gonna be in this area here. And the lowest score is a 0 0.3. And so that's going to be in your inhabit or uninhabited areas, such as in this area here. And once again, I want to point out the Asheville Center and Census Tract 9, as well as up here by Barnardsville. All right, so hopefully this is a little bit easier to see. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit more in depth about the census tracts that I just pointed out. So Census Track 9 is home of the River Arts District, as well as the South Slope neighborhood. Um, this, this census tract had the highest scores out of all of Buncombe County. Um, and it had high scores in each criteria. So um, some possible reasons for this may lie in the history of this area. So some of you may already know this, but the South Slope area is a previously redlined community. Um, for those who don't know what redlining is, it was a historically racist practice that prevented Black homeowners from, um, from securing home mortgage loans. Um, this census tract is also home to a higher percentage of the Black population than the entire Buncombe County average. Um, I guess, let me rephrase that. So this census tract has an average of the black population that's over two times higher than that of Buncombe County. Um, knowing this history, I decided to look a little bit more into it. Um, so I took all the census tracts that had a percentage of the black population that was higher than the county, and I averaged their temperatures and compared them with census tracts that had a percentage below the county average. I found that um, these census tracts ended up being one to two degrees higher in areas with a higher black population. Um, I did not run a statistical correlation on this, so I can't directly say that um, heat exposure um, is tied to race, but I think it would be interesting as future research to look into more. Um, back to the topic of tree planting and mitigation, I wanna mention that this area probably could benefit from Asheville Greenworks' tree planting campaign or tree planting in general. Um, because it was high in the land surface temperatures, as well as in um, like developed areas, um, being able to plant trees to help bring those temperatures down would reduce their vulnerability score. So next, I want to talk about Census Tract 29 and contrast it a little bit. So Census Tract 29 has Barnardsville, as I mentioned before, and it also has some high scores, though nowhere near as high as Census Tract 9. Um, I also want to point out this stark contrast as you cross the census tract border. Um, to me, that shows that the primary reason for their high scores is their sensitivity data. Um, so this, this census tract tends to have um, an older population as well as a lot less access to primary health care, which are some contributing factors. Um, and because of this, I don't think this area would be a good um, Priority, priority area for the tree planting campaign. All right, and then one last area I wanna point out before I move on um, is this area here between Swannanoa and Black Mountain. So this encompasses multiple census tracts, um, which tells me that it's more likely, it, it, its high scores are more, more likely because of the high temperatures and um, low amounts of vegetation here. So this could also be a good priority area for Asheville Greenworks' tree planting campaign. All right, and so I wanna talk about some possible issues with my data. So the first one is that I did use a census tract scale for my sensitivity data. Um, since we were trying to do this on as small of a scale as possible, potentially pixel by pixel, it would have been better if we were able to use census blocks or census block groups. 
Um, however, since I was working with some medical data, this information isn't available on a small scale in order to protect the medical privacy of individuals. I also want to point out that I use the land surface temperatures instead of air temperatures. Um, so while land surface temperatures are easy, easy to acquire and do represent heat within a city, they aren't quite, they're not what we feel as we go about our day. So air temperature would also include humidity and other factors that would lead to how hot the environment feels. So I do think being able to go into all of Buncombe County to look at air temperature and air quality would would us would help us. Um, <laughs> can't remember words today, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it would help us a lot with making the heat vulnerability index more accurate to what we feel. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about this on the next slide. Um, and then some more future research that I mentioned briefly before is looking at whether heat exposure and race is statistically correlated. Um, over the summer, I found that was different for every city. Some cities did find this correlated and some didn't. So I'm curious if Buncombe County will or not. All right, and so now a little bit more about air temperature. So over the summer, um, we actually had a huge um, heat mapping campaign looking at air temperature throughout Buncombe County. Um, we were, this was supported by the CAPA strategies um, and we were able to take volunteers on a bunch of predetermined routes, okay, predetermined routes throughout um, Buncombe County. Um, we actually used my map to help us find specific areas to prioritize. So we did end up going through the Swannanoa and Black Mountain area, as well as the South, South Slope and other, other areas as well. Um, this data does not encompass all of Buncombe County, only those primary er focus areas. And so that's why we ultimately needed the full um, heat vulnerability map that I created over the summer. All right, and so what we hope to do with this information is put it up on an interactive website through Asheville Greenworks. So you can see it, you can see it sort of here. This is the draft version of the website that I have up where you'll be able to access the heat vulnerability index as well as the data from the CAPA strategies heat mapping study um, through this website. So this you'll be able to insert your own home address and then be able to look and see where you fall along the index. Um, we're hoping this will allow people to do their own actions to um, help their own neighborhoods as well as be used by Asheville Greenworks and maybe even Asheville City or Buncombe County planners. So some takeaways. Um, so heat vulnerability indexing can help us identify com uh, communities to target with mitigation strategies and even help us identify which mitigation strategies we need to use. Um, and two of the primary locations that I mentioned throughout this presentation were Census Tract 9, which was your South Slope area. Um, the Census Tract met all criteria and would be a good place to mitigate with tree planting. Um, in contrast, Census Tract 29, which included Barnardsville, um, had met only met primarily the sensitivity criteria. And so because of that and the because of that, and it had lower temperatures and higher instances of vegetation, using tree planting as a mitigation strategy here wouldn't be as effective. All right, and before I get into questions, I wanna mention this QR code up here. This will take you to the Asheville Greenworks' newsletter website, where you can sign up for notifications about the website. Um, the website isn't up quite yet, but will be coming up in the next couple months. And so if you sign up, you'll be able to um, here right when it comes up, as well as learn a little bit more about the project. All right, thank you.